Ever go to those DevOps events where they like have like slide, you know, roulette, where you just they do random slides and people talk about them? Maybe we'll do that today. Who knows? It's not a presentation if something doesn't go wrong, right folks? Appreciate your patience and sense of humor. There we go. Thank you, sir. Before we get started, can we just give a round of applause to our, our friends here in the back? Dave Rittenhouse, George C. Marshall. We went to high school together, believe it or not. Falls Church, Virginia. Good to see you, brother. Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to talk about data observability for Snowflake. How to align costs to value and performance in your Snowflake environment. Quick introduction. Disclaimer, we've, you've seen that a few times so far, so we'll skip through that. So real quick, my name is Jerome Lentz. I can handle some of our large global accounts uh, at Assault Data. And with me is our fearless leader of product, Tristan Spaulding. And so I'm gonna walk through very quickly an agenda, quick intro into Assault Data. We're gonna talk about data observability for Snowflake. And again, it's never a demonstration or presentation if something doesn't go wrong. The demo, we couldn't get working here, so we're gonna be doing demos in booth 2020, right immediately after. So Tristan's gonna uh, do a round table, a little uh, Q&A. So if you have questions you wanna talk through, the observability, some of your challenges, question about the product, Tristan will be here to answer your questions. All right? Fantastic. So, a little bit about the cell data. Uh, we've been around now for four years, one of really the early pioneers uh, of the data observability space. Uh, we've got some great uh, enterprise customers. We focus largely on, on the enterprise, high growth startups, uh, customers that have a lot of data, complex environments, uh, and a lot of customers that are either data is their product or their company is highly reliant upon data and being delivered effectively, uh, reliably on time with high quality. Those are the kinds of customers we work with. Um, raise a good amount of money, We've got a great leadership team from, uh, from Google, Cloudera, Hortonworks, etc. So this is our mission. Our mission here is to uh, eliminate complexity, scale data usage, and generate significantly improved business outcomes. So what does that mean, right? We provide a multi-dimensional uh, data observability platform uh, that does some very, very unique things. We synthesize signals across your data pipelines. The data that's in those pipelines, so is the data reliable, right? We're tracking things like schema drift, lineage, lineage data lineage quality. And then finally, we're actually um, getting very, very deep insight into the processing engine itself. In this case, we're gonna talk about Snowflake today, right? But um, that is what makes us uh, very unique, all right? Moving right along, let's talk a little bit about data observability for Snowflake. So we talked a little bit about our platform. This is just a little bit deeper dive into kind of what we do. So we focus really on, again, data pipelines, data management, and the data processing layer. Again, what makes us very, very unique. So let's just talk a little bit about data pipelines and what we do. You know, do you have good visibility or access in your entire data supply chain, right? Do you have access in the end-to-end -end from when your data comes into your organization to when it's transformed, to when it's processed, to when it leaves? That's where we focus, right? We focus on helping improving throughput, eliminating bottlenecks, and helping understand the cost of our data pipelines and how to make them perform better and more cost efficiently. Our data management layer helps our customers increase trust and reliability. They also help automate a lot of data quality rules that you might have manually. How many of you have, you know, that's a great question. How many of y'all have a laundry list, you know, an arm's length long, long of data quality rules that you need to write, but you can't get them done? You know, I see some hands, right? Very difficult to do, right? Data engineers don't have the bandwidth, business, has, business requests are ever changing. We can automate about 80% of those quality rules that you've got stuck in your pipeline. So we can increase the coverage that you have in you know, making your data better across your organization. So that's what our automation does. And then finally, in the data processing layer, again, which we're gonna talk about with Snowflake, again, you have an S1, S1 issue in, 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 your, in your data processing layer, it's a murder mystery, you gotta get 10 people on the phone to figure out what's wrong, you're down, your customer is pissed. We help prevent outages in the first place when something does go bump in the night, we help you identify what the problem is so you can fix it quickly and get back up and running. We help you scale, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about optimizing resources and costs. Everybody here loves Snowflake, right? Of course, we love it. Yeah. Everybody's adopted Snowflake, great, right? Absolutely, wonderful. Anybody happy with their Snowflake bill? Easy. I didn't see anybody raise their hand. 
<laughs> Anybody ever have your CFO knock on your door, hey, why are we over our consumption budget for the year? I mean, I, every, one of y'all should be raising your hand. I see some hands coming up, all right? So what we're really about here, and what we're gonna talk about in Snowflake is how do you align cost to performance to value so that you can grow and scale intelligently, so that you can go to your finance team and say, yes, we're getting value out of this. Here's the cost of our queries. Here's the ones that cost us the most. And hey, if you want to reduce costs, okay, but you're going to lose performance on some of these, these queries that you're running that are of great value to the business. So we give you that deep granular insight that lets you grow and scale intelligently in Snowflake. All right? Moving on. So cloud data platforms. We're going to talk about Snowflake again. We love Snowflake. There's a good and there's the challenges that we have. So I had a product actually build this platform at Nutanix. He was one of the early adopters of Snowflake. This is 2017. And uh, he adopted Snowflake just like you all did for a lot of these reasons, right? Don't have to provision servers. Don't have to wait weeks or months for, uh, you know, the infrastructure team to get you a server. Great. Scale infinitely. Fantastic. Busy time of the year. Great. We don't have to have dead time in servers that we're paying for. You can innovate and pay by the drink. These are all great concepts. You understand this. The challenges on the right are the things that our head of product, our lead product lead for uh, the durability for Snowflake ran into. And you guys probably see some of these same problems, right? What's the visibility and usage and trends? Right? Who's using what? What's it costing us? What's our chargeback model? How do we charge How do we charge back, right? How do you align cost to value? Are we getting our bang for our buck in Snowflake? Can you prove it? These are some of the challenges, right, that he was facing. I'm sure some of you all are too. Are we optimizing our resources, right? Uh, do we have the right? Are we sized correctly for what our, for our workloads? And how does that affect our costs? What kind of best practice violations are we, are we encountering in our organization? How do we implement guardrails effectively? How do we automate administration? How many of your admins actually read the release notes when Snowflake brings them out? How many of you are actually checking if your JDB and ODB connectors are up to date when you have a new release? So what if we can automate that? What if we can read the release notes, compare it against your environment, and automatically alert you if you're out of bounds. So these are some of the things that we're working on and doing. So, how do we do this? At a high level, we align cost to value and performance in three in three pillars. The first one is spend intelligence. Okay? It, again, it's not just reporting on what you're spending, it's helping you understand if there's anomalous behavior. Is there a cost spike? A query that usually costs us ten bucks, now is on track to cost us three thousand dollars. Why? It happens. How do you prevent that from happening? How do you alert to it? in real time, that's what we're working on. These aren't dashboards, these aren't reports. We're, we're reading your Snowflake environment in near real time and we are alerting to it when there's anomalous behavior in your costs. We're also doing forecasting and trending compared to your contract and all that good stuff as well. But the stuff that's really neat is the real time intelligence. The next step, data reliability. So how is the high quality data? Is it coming into Snowflake? Is it reliable? What's the effect of poor data in Snowflake? Right, if we run this job and have to rerun it, what if we can keep your high quality data so that you don't have to rerun jobs for bad quality data that comes into Snowflake in the first place? We can quantify that and we can tell you. So governance folks, right? It's pretty valuable. Finally, best practices. How do we cre create maybe run books? Maybe you're scaling your Snowflake environment. How can we automate all those things so that we have best practices implemented, we got guardrails implemented, so that you don't have to go through the whole manual administration processes. Okay, so uh, Okay, now we're going to go over to Tristan. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Oh, we might be... We're actually going to do a demo here. Ah, fantastic. I love being wrong. All right. Sounds good. Tristan, take it away. Thanks. All right, so we're going to switch over to our demo screen here. Thanks, Jerome. And we're going to do, very quickly go through two sides of this and really try to highlight how data reliability and cost optimization for Snowflake really go hand in hand which might not be the case in traditional on-premise demo environments, but very much is as you go through. So what we're looking at here is an overview, basically, of a Snowflake account, as well as the data assets underneath it. So if we drill in to basically this Snowflake prod instance, what we're going to see is a breakdown of costs across, uh, basically, mostly warehouse, but also some serverless and some storage components as well. What we can do across this is essentially break it down. So the first side is break it down identify which warehouses are spending and uh, how, who is using those warehouses, and basically how does this line up with your contract in itself. So I think typically people will see new warehouses proliferate to new groups as you go through and spread Snowflake, and you end up using Snowflake at all hours of every 
free day here. That's good if you are yourself like a doctor. We're seeing usage, we're driving use cases, but when we think about the use cases still on the backlog and scaling the ones we have, we start to worry about maybe getting 97% of the way through our capacity for something that's meant to last us for forever. And so the next question becomes, what can we do about that? What do we do about it? So the first thing to do is at the people level, identify which groups in a nested organization structure are using Snowflake and see the history of their adoption. So within this, we can see within our engineering and our cloud ops group, they've started to ramp up. They started using it, again, excellent, but going forward, we're gonna to wanna to be able to break this down and forecast what we need to budget for them in the future. What we're also gonna do need to do with decentralized rapid growth is to identify different, different usage patterns underneath this, as well as data that's unreliable. So what we're looking at here basically is looking at uh, all of the, the most used tables underneath this warehouse as well as their reliability stats. So by reliability, we look at simple data quality checks all the way through to custom UDFs and statistical deviations of the, when the data drifts over time. All of this gets flagged, and what we're able to do immediately is cross over directly from the high-level table usage into the detailed data asset, row-level, column-level analysis. This becomes quite powerful because what we're able to do here is identify when data has gone wrong flag you, create an incident and manage that, and basically prevent this from reaching your upstream production tables that you're running queries against. These queries, you know, uh, it's not uncommon to see hundreds of dollars on a query, thousands of dollars even on a query, and when that's on bad data, that is essentially squandered. So as companies are looking for, how do I do more with Snowflake, how am I more effective, identifying that and cutting it off becomes a big deal. This is where, oh. So what we'll do with this is basically zoom back out into the, the overall pipeline view that'll come up here. So this data set that we were looking at was the final table in a long chain. And what we can do with Excel data is basically monitor every step in that chain, whether it happens to be Snowflake, or it happens to be Databricks, or it happens to be a file system. So we'll zoom back out into the, the pipeline here and basically depict data progressing all the way you know, from upstream through transformations into this ultimate station status that we showed. And so what we're looking to do is catch this you know, shift left in data as well as we do in, in, in DevOps. Shift left to the files that are upstream, catch the data problems within them, and sort of intercept that, cut it off, flag it, so that it doesn't contaminate downstream. So this becomes, after you go through all of the ways that we can reduce cost or reduce bad practices on Snowflake, which we had to skip through here, happy to give a demo with Booth 2020 to go through those in details, you end up identifying the impact of unreliable data on your overall success. So this is a story basically of one pipeline that we're monitoring every run of. What we see with many large enterprises is even understanding the spread and usage and reliability of data assets is a huge issue. And so what we've done here is basically combine these compute and these data reliability aspects to identify data assets that are underutilized, whether or not their quality is high, they're underutilized, and so, you know, in aggregate, they may be wasting some resources, either on storage, compute, or just in sort of sprawl. But up in the top left here, we have the really concerning category. These are assets that are used heavily, lots of queries, lots of spend, lots of usage, but very poor data reliability. So this is something where, by flagging this, you're able to very quickly identify okay, now I need to go in and rapidly add in an automated fashion, add you know, hundreds of data quality policies, data drift policies, reconciliation policies, timeliness, all of the policies on top of this in order to protect this and drive value. So I think that's that might be just about the time we have. We have a little more? Samir, so why don't you go into the compute side? We'll show a little bit of the controls on, on this side. So just to dig back in basically to, to the under the covers of Snowflake. So if we look at the administration, one of the common patterns that we, we find when people are adopting Snowflake across different organizations is administrative sprawl. So basically people with sysadmin permissions, account admin permissions that were granted it because they were getting started and now they've scaled beyond the point where they want to do that and where it's not safe to do. So flagging this immediately will let you know to, to sort of close these off. 
if we go to guardrails as well, so Snowflake does come with, with a lot of nice guardrails, but in many cases they might be a little looser than you want from a, from a straight perspective when you're scaling at the levels that this account is showing. So statement resource monitors that are not set up or statement timeouts that are excessively large two days, this is something you might want to flag right away, especially if you're concerned about the data reliability, which I think many people tend to be. Another aspect is what we call housekeeping. So Jerome mentioned uh, basically keeping track of unused data as well as drivers that are out of date. So the great thing about cloud data platforms, they're constantly pushing updates every two weeks, every month, new versions are coming across, out across all these. Understanding what you're missing can be a free lunch in terms of improving security performance and ultimately cost efficiency. So we flag this for you. By the way, we're showing these all in views, but if we go over and show the alerts, we also have about 25 built-in alerts for Snowflake and a lot of ability to customize these. So if you go back and show the alerts, just as an example of what's here, ranging of, you know, across all aspects of queries queue, queries stalling because the, the warehouses are, are uh, over capacity, to permissions, uh, permissions being, you know, being read to people that shouldn't have them, users not having passwords, things like this. This all gets flagged away and logged with sort of the criticality and the ops level that it should be. So this is a built-in basically ops component for both compute and reliability in the same view so that you can stay on top of these. I think the, the last bit I would want to show would be around uh, would be around the performance side. So if we go into this, you know, essentially we're showing query times, you know, down to the level of individual queries and identifying ones that have costly information on them. So they might have taken a long time to compile, they might have long, they might be running on data sets that haven't been properly configured, and so you're doing these heavy scans. These things, again, understanding what they are and then being able to cross over and say, hey, well, this was an expensive query, we attribute you know, $300 to this or X amount of time. Tell me about that data. Tell me about if that data was good, if we re-ran this query 10 times because you weren't getting the results that we want. Uh, this is something you're able to identify with multi-dimensional data observability. So I think with that, that covers uh, a little out of sequence, but most of what we wanted to cover here. Uh, happy to take any questions and happy to follow up, uh, give a deeper dive at Booth 2020. Joseph, thank you so much. Everyone, thanks again for coming. And again, we are right by Muta, Booth 2020. If you want to stop by and say hi, we're going to hang out here for a few minutes. Happy to answer any questions that you have. And uh, thanks again for coming. We'll see you soon.